Hello, welcome to this session on the power of networks. I'm Jill Reed, Head of Communications at the Crafts Council, and joining me today is Pip Jameson, founder and CEO of The Dots, which Forbes likened to a LinkedIn for creative professionals, which is a big compliment. So we're going to be talking about the value of networks and connecting um, to professional contacts. So I'm going to hand over to Pip to tell us a little bit more about The Dots. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I love that Forbes quote. I guess we are um, a professional network but for people that think creatively, but it's for the people and teams, I guess, that make ideas happen. Um, you know, why I'm so passionate about the space is creativity is about collaboration and connecting things and making ideas happen, and I guess that's the community we empower. So... I sort of started the platform because I worked in the creative industries and I just, LinkedIn just felt so corporate and dry and I wanted to build my network, but I wanted a space that felt right for me mm -hmm. and for my friends. So um, the big difference between us, I guess, and LinkedIn is people post projects and showcase what they do, but then they use the platform to find collaborators, find work and help each other with getting ideas off the ground, which is really yeah. exciting to see. Absolutely. And it was, I know it's this idea of sort of group tagging. Mm -hmm. So you can see everybody that's been involved in a project, yeah. which is lovely and sort of democratic. And also obviously for people, companies, brands, finding creative professionals, they can see it in the round and they can see who's been involved in the whole project. Yeah. And it, it's recognition that creativity is a team sport. Yeah. Like even if you think you're on your own, you're, you're not, you know, you need someone to help you with doing your website or doing your photos for your website or you know a great space where you're exhibiting your work so yeah the way this platform works is projects can be kind of anything from like a magazine to an mm. app to um kind of a book and it literally then you tag the full team that collaborated to make that idea happen so it's really magic to see all those dots connect and and people sort of working together to make ideas happen absolutely so as well as brands mm. looking for say a graphic designer or a photographer mm. Do you find those creative professionals finding each other? Yeah, massive. So we have a whole collaboration section where you can do a collaborative. It's completely free to do call outs, but mm. you can say, okay, I need someone to do my website um, mm. or I need someone to design my brand or I need someone to do the photos for my online storefront. And mm. so it's it's the community helping each other um and what i love is that interdisciplinary collaboration that happens because you know we are better together and yeah. working together and it, you know that you can have that small idea and you might not know i don't know how to do a social media strategy but you can find that person and connect with them on the dots and then you can start bringing that idea not only to life but you know, elevating that idea beyond um, what you're doing. And sort of then co-owning it, I suppose. Yeah. So that's like a beautiful thing that then it's a sort of a shared thing and you have advocates and yeah. then kind of people who really believe in that project. So I suppose the other thing that it does is show show the individuals on it what's going on in their in the creative industries, yeah. the creative sector yeah. and in their sector. And that's quite invaluable, I think, yeah. to kind of put your head above what you're personally doing and kind of know what's going on. So there's probably... Yeah. In dis like some to some extent industry insights gathered from something like the yeah, dots. Yeah, and it's magical because everyone kind of connects with each other. But you get, you know, you can literally find such brilliant inspiration on mm. how other people are doing it, and also who they're collaborating with. Like yeah. it's so useful to say, okay, I've seen this beautiful project I love, or this beautiful um, brand I love. Who's actually working mm. behind the scenes to make that happen? And you can mm. actually discover that. But then for me, I'm also very passionate about helping people get stuff done. You yeah. know, I think a lot of social media platforms are all about just endless chat and it's all mm -hmm. about the likes, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I sort of, uh, for us, we always are focused on like it's about meaningful things that you need help with. So yeah. we have a whole Ask the Community session section where you can go and ask like the questions and it can be anything like, does anyone know a good printer to actually... I'm feeling a little alone today. Does mm. anyone want a coffee? Or yeah. I'm one that broke my heart yet. Well, it was about two days ago when someone said, you know, Brexit, the whole Brexit thing's freaking me out. It's oh. like, can anyone? And so everyone was reassure sort of, me. Everyone <laughs> yeah. reassure me. So it's been lovely where it's sort of getting shit done, but also kind of support. It's just yeah. general support. And a lot of our community, uh, like 41% of our community are freelancers or work from home. And so sometimes you can feel quite isolated. So it's that place where yeah. people can come together and help each other, which I get really excited. Yeah. And absolutely for makers, that is, you know, a lot of them work on their own in studio. So connecting to people and that's where social media and platforms like the dots come in are so vital because they do connect people. Uh, so building a network can be a bit of a daunt. Well, if people could see that as quite a daunting task. So what 
what would your tips be for somebody at the start of their career, be they a maker or a creative professional? You know, this idea of networking, I think, scares a lot of people. Yeah. But um, what what would your tips be? Yeah, I, I did, gosh, networking is such a corporate LinkedIn yeah. term. And it's so funny. It's You know, it's all about relationships and building community and yeah. helping each other. And really building a network is just building a community. And I love the word community yeah. because it's, it's, a, it's a community of people that can help you um, emotionally and yeah. professionally and you know when you're starting out it can feel um, quite nerve-wracking and mm. I think something we've tried to do at the dots is so I have a I'm not sure if I can even use this word but we have a no assholes rule <laughs> <laughs> that's good <laughs> we have that the class council as well. everyone has you know it's a supported <laughs> nurturing environment I think there's lots of other toxic places to spend time online and we, we actually have a, a, a zero tolerance rule for mm, that mm. you know it's all about helping mm-hmm. each other and with that it's made our community really comfortable with connecting mm. with each other and mm. So, you know, I think it's literally just don't be afraid to, for example, connect on the dots. But I'm yeah. still a really, you know, we help people connect yeah. on the platform, but I'm a massive fan of connecting offline as well. I think the yeah. best relationships are still made face to face. Absolutely. And, um, yeah. So we actually have an event section on the dots where people can discover in- industry uh, events, networking mm. events. Because, yeah, it's, 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 it's nice to put the faces to people and yeah. get to know people in the real world. Um, yeah. And with those in-person networking, I used to, I used to, I hate, I used to hate those events where you're I like, know. oh, Think of what, what can I say? What can I say? How do I introduce myself? Yeah. And also when you're just like, oh, everyone's talking to each yeah. other. Do I just How do I break there? into the How group? Do yeah. But I think um, I sort of came to terms with the fact that actually everyone's there for the same reason. Yeah. And everyone's genuinely lovely. And yeah. so as soon as you realize that, you know, people are there for the same reason as you. People are really open to chatting. And if they're not, then they're not right to they're chat assholes. to anyway. Then they're <laughs> assholes. <laughs> you don't want them. <laughs> I don't want them. And I, I love that. I love that, you know, there is those, you know, you can find your your community, your tribe, your, your yeah. people. And um, that's just what we try and help with. Yes. Yeah. Connecting you to like-minded people that you can then build that community around that can support you as, as yeah. you're trying to get ideas off the ground. And I suppose that comes down to shared values, doesn't it? So it's basically finding a value fit. And that's not just true of individuals. Presumably it's true of a brand you might work with. It's, does, is the value the right fit for me? And that's, maybe that's your, the starting point. No, for me, like, oh, it's funny. I was, I was chatting about this actually from a hiring perspective mm. in that, you know, we, we work with around 10,000 companies that do use us to hire as well. And so, you know, that values fit is the most important thing. You get that wrong, then everything else falls apart. You yeah. can have the most skilled people in the world, but yeah. the values are everything. And actually, we screen when we hire people for values first. Yeah. Because I've been guilty in the past of meeting someone and thinking, oh my gosh, on paper, they're the most skilled and wonderful. And yeah. then they sort of fallen down on the values later down in the yeah. track. But they're the ones that always don't work out. Yeah. So, so start with those values. Start with those and I values. think actually for makers, it's something that our talent development team work a lot with makers mm-hmm. on is what, what are your values? Because yeah. it's different and it's, there aren't mm-hmm. wrong or right ones. Yeah. If it's a about being the most successful maker and you want a piece of your work in the V&A great yeah. if it's not about that and it's about making in communities then that's also good but I suppose it's no identifying for yourself what your values are yeah. and then you can see your potential collaborators and, and connections um, so it do, would you say and it sounds a bit like maybe this is the case do you think building a network is a different exercise for a creative professional as opposed to anybody else I think I think that, I think the principles are the same mm. um, what I love about the creative industries more broadly, and you know, you know, I was working in the corporate industry. Mm. I used to be an economist, gosh, fifteen years ago now. But um, the big difference is, I find that actually people are just generally really nice. So I think maybe it's easier to build yeah. a community in the yeah. creative industries, which really more generous. Me. Do you think there's more generosity? More generosity. More collaboration. Yeah, I think just more. It's just it's nicer. It's kind of it's less cut cutthroat. I think, yeah. but that's when the best relationships are built. I think yeah. when you go into um, building a relationship, with someone if you're only building that relationship and expect something straight back, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's never going to work. Yeah. Um, and the people that I know that are brilliant at building networks and communities are just generally curious about people, mm. interested in people, generally helpful. Yeah. And it's amazing how like someone I helped out like say 10 years ago and wasn't expecting anything back suddenly is in this amazing place helping me out 10 years later and you know for every one of those there's 30 that 
didn't, but yeah. that doesn't matter. And yeah. I think if you have that generous nature, and I feel like in the creative industries, people are more like that. And so. that's so lovely. Yeah. So. And I think that's a good point, actually, about yeah. the the instant gratification yeah. versus actually this is a this is a long term thing yeah. and it's about building trust and it's about those values and how mm. you display those through your professional practice and conduct yeah. and actually opportunities might come through years yeah. down the line or even longer but it's you know it's not an instant gratification thing is it and the best connections are those long term ones where you've built yeah. a relationship you understand each other and it, yeah. you know so it is it just should feel like building a friendship group and I think that's yeah. the other really wonderful thing about the creative industries now I don't feel like I have to separate friends and not yeah. you know people like me I genuinely love and want to be around so you're building friendships but also professional networks at the same time which Absolutely. Is great. so diversity is really really important yes. to you and across all different sort of gender ethnicity LGBT so how how do how would somebody go about embedding that in their own sort of personal practice? Would yeah, you say? I think the, I mean the reason I'm so passionate about it is because I'm very dyslexic, as are lots of other creators yeah, and lots of makers. Um, absolutely, lots of makers. Lots of makers. Um, I'm also a sole female tech founder. Yeah. Um, just to put it in context, here in the UK, at my level, it's only about two point three percent of women, which is terrifying. Um, um, so I also experienced firsthand when I was working in the creative industries how I guess corrosive, very homogenous teams can be. Mm -hmm. And so if you're all the same, you're, what you're doing is just like the same. It's mm -hmm. all very samey. If you want to think differently, you need different perspectives, different ideas, different skill sets, different mm -hmm. backgrounds. And it's very intersectional. You know, mm -hmm. um, we do a huge amount of work. You know, 68% um, of my community is female, 31% mm -hmm. BAME, 16% LGBT. Um, we do a huge amount of work around socioeconomic movement, mm. neurodiversity, which is dyslexic, autism, dyspraxia, inc increasingly ageism, which can be a problem within mm. the creative industries. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, we, it's now completely proven in business that diversity in all that its guise is. And mm. when I talk about diversity, it's really about building teams that reflect society. Yeah. It is better for business. It's better for creativity because you've yeah. got different perspectives. And it just actually leads to more happiness yeah. in, in a team dynamic because you are not all the same and competing. And that's yeah. a really interesting. If you're very similar to someone, you're just going to start competing and clashing. Yeah. If you're different, it means you're leaning into the things that you're naturally good at. And yeah. I love that. And yeah. that's so exciting for the future of creativity. And the best creative ideas, projects, everything come out of teams that are diverse. I mean, it's yeah. harder when you're a, a sole trader, for example. Yeah. Um, but that diversity can come with the kind of providers that you work with, whether that's like social yeah. media support or graphic design support or photography yeah. support or the choice of where you um, exhibit or the shows you go to or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, or the business. professional networking events that you go to. Absolutely. You know, be, be a bit more open-minded yeah. maybe in the kind of things that yeah. you go to. And the kind of networks you build in terms of mental networks as yeah. well. And so people that are helping you, you should make sure that those people should reflect society as opposed to carbon copies of ourselves which we yeah. can tend to do yeah absolutely it's very ways, common so. yeah yeah brilliant yeah. um so i'm going to embarrass you a little bit now uh so the the dots was named as one of the top startups of 2019 and you've just been included on the long list for this year's most influential woman in uk tech so <laughs> <laughs> embarrassed um so how have your own networks helped you with those achievements would you say oh it's, it's probably everything yeah. <laughs> um you know, I am a non-tech tech founder, so yeah. I didn't study computer science. Um, I had no tech background. I just had an idea for a better way for networking for people that worked across the creative yeah. industry. So I had this crazy, bold vision and idea, and then I had to build this whole tech platform and build yeah. a big team and raise investment and all these crazy things. Um, so my network has been everything because they are the people that have supported me on this journey. And I mm. kind of, it's a, I've got an amazing network of mentors. Mm. And so I kind of actually think of my mentors like a portfolio of net, uh, mentors, yeah. actually. People who specialize in how to raise investment, how to mm. build teams, how to build a website. So, And how um, did you find them just out of interest? Gosh, it's been relationship building. Actually. Okay. It was never, it was funny because it, uh, it was never... I think the one or two times I tried, would you be my mentor? <laughs> it didn't work. Because it um, it's about so, that fit, isn't it? It's about a personal chemistry and a fit. fit. Yeah. And you need to get to know someone. So actually, um, when I first started, funnily enough, I was desperate for female mentors that worked mm. in tech. 
Um, and I was emailing all these really famous female tech founders like Holly Tucker, who started Northern mm. High Street, and you know Natalie, um, who started uh, Netta Porter, and obviously no one's getting back to me, and I'm like, Ooh, what's happening? <laughs> um, and then I actually realized I now get about 60 emails a day from female founders wow. wanting mentorship, and yeah. it's physically impossible for me to have all those coffees. So I changed tact, mm. and I actually found male mentors mm. who had daughters. Oh. <laughs> and so and then I started getting very senior mentors. Yeah. But it always started with meeting someone at an event, mm-hmm. um, and then it always then started like just chatting, and then when I, I sort of remembered what they did, and when I had a problem maybe mm. six months down the track, I said, do you mind on... Um, having challenges with this thing yeah would I could I take you for a coffee and ask for your help and I think the importance of a portfolio of mentors is no one's good at everything yeah and so and also the best people are busy yeah but if you have that specific problem that they yeah. can help with just like that then they're yeah. so happy to help so yeah. I might talk to a mentor like you know 10 times in a week yeah and then I'll leave them in peace for six months yes yeah. yeah. it's a very organic yeah. natural process um we have actually a mentor call-out board on the dots as well, where oh, you can do right. call-outs for mentors. Yeah. We also have a kind of a list of recommended mentorship programs that yeah. now exist helping people. So it's always worth checking those out. Yeah. Well. Uh, so that wraps up our conversation. A big thank you to Pip Jameson from the dots um, and for you watching. Um, so if you have any questions about net working or connecting to other professionals then either message us on our facebook page or direct messages or in or email makeadev m-a-k-e-r-d-e-v at craftscouncil.org.uk and we'll be happy to help so thanks for watching